from Portland, Oregon, it's time for A Different View with women's perspectives on the fight to end prohibition again with Portland Dispensaries examiner and mother of four, Jennifer Alexander, and professional health care provider, Iva Cunningham, from Alternative Medical Choices, Inc. Now, here's A Different View. Welcome to A Different View. I'm Jennifer here with Iva. Hello. Welcome back. Oh, so, what an interesting week of the news has been, huh? There's been a lot of stuff going on. There always is. Yeah, well, we're a pretty active community. <laughs> yeah, we've got we're a lot of things to talk about. I think, I think we're going to have a few things for each segment, because I've got a few things, you've got a few things, and, and there's just a lot going on. Well, I think... Um, I'll, I think we definitely should talk about some of this, the um, impacts that are coming out, um, uh, impacts on uh, you know on the states that have legalized. Oh, you mean just, from like Colorado, yeah, Washington, Col- and the yeah, surrounding exactly. states? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So there's a, there's some interesting um, um, uh, what do they call that? In, or, uh, unintended consequences, and not necessarily bad, um, but because of that, some of them good, some of them bad. But we can talk about that later. I hope right. we just talk about that. And then um, I, I want to touch on that quilt that we were talking about last week. Yeah, I, I'm yeah, really liking I really this idea. And we've got to expand on it a little bit. So we'll talk about that a little bit. And then um, I've got a couple of news stories that I thought would be interesting to talk about. One is um, a CPS story dealing with a legal medical marijuana patient, CPS mm-hmm. being Child Protective Custody right. or Services. I mean, um, they often take you know children into custody, foster care, that kind of thing. And I want to talk a little bit about a story that the Salem News covered on this issue. Um, then there's also um, a, a, a recent paper, and I haven't had a lot of time to research this paper, but it's disputing that marijuana uh, drop in IQ link that was big news last year where they were analyzing it. He's disputing this. So Mm -hmm. I figured we'd touch on that a little bit. And then there's uh, a story that I was reading, and it's it's quite detailed about an ex-narcotics chief um, doing undercover uh, stings. And I just I, I find so many things about this story problematic that I figured we we touch on it a little bit because he openly admits a lot of the things that drive me nuts about law enforcement with the drug war. So uh, <laughs> well, we'll talk a little bit about that. Speaking of that, we can talk about drug driving laws and and have little or no impact impact on the traffic deaths. So that's something that just came out recently as well. I want to talk about that. Like I said, we got a lot to talk about. Yeah, tonight, it'll be so. a good show, and I hope you stay tuned in. Um, to listen to Jennifer and myself just ramble on and argue sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll take a quick break here. Uh, you're listening to A Different View. You can listen to us on, or check us out on Twitter, ADB420, and on Facebook, A Different View. We'll right. be right back. And... <laughs> California is the center of marijuana consciousness. That's why High Times Magazine is returning to the Golden State for our second High Times Medical Cannabis Cup in Los Angeles. That's right. Come to L.A. Center Studios on February 16th and 17th for this high flying event. Meet the medical cannabis industry, visit our extra special medicating area, and sample the best cannabis products of Southern California. There will be cultivation seminars and presentations about getting pot legalized, not just in California, but everywhere. Be there on Saturday evening when we host a rock'em sock'em concert with surprise musical guests. And don't forget Sunday night and the High Times Medical Cannabis Cup Awards when we honor the best sativa, best indica, best hybrid, best concentrate, and best edibles of the L.A. medical cannabis scene. Plus, we present the High Times Lifetime Achievement Award to marijuana superstar Tommy Chong. Come to the City of the Angels on February 16th and 17th for a High Times Cannabis Celebration. Go to MedCanCup.com for details. Live the high life. Be proud of who you are. Be part of the growing cannabis community. We're back with a different view. Welcome back. I'm Jennifer here with Iva. Uh, we're, we're having technical difficulties already, so we'll <laughs> it's really the operators, <laughs> not the technical, not, not the equipment. When I was working tech support, we used to call that pebcac. Problem exists between chair and keyboard. <laughs> well, there's, that is so true. <laughs> What, what, one of the, the most humorous, you know, things that always comes up with tech support is like, my printer's not working. Is it turned on? Oh, is it plugged no. in? Oh, that's the problem. 
Oh, customer service is fun. Anyway. Anyway. So I wanted to touch a little bit um, on this quilt that we were talking about. Yeah. We just barely got it at the end of the show. And, and since then, you and I have talked a little bit about it. And mm -hmm. I just think it's a great idea. Um, there's so many people affected by, by the drug war. Well, so many people that die, you know, that lose their lives. And um, My thing is I am really tired. I'm so tired of hearing... Um, um, we don't go after marijuana, you know, patients. We don't lock people up for marijuana. Use marijuana. Right. You know, it's the, what's the, it's the unicorn in the room. I've heard all these things like they're like, oh, well, you know, we have to keep these laws on the books because that, and I'm thinking, and to me, you know, we hear stories all the time. We see, hear tragic, horrible stories from the mother who's lost her child, uh, or children to people who've, who've, um, you know, died. And, um, you know, and I think, and we got to think it, we've got to talking about more that, that there's, there's a lot of people who've died as a consequence to the drug war than, um, anyone wants to acknowledge or realize this. And, and there's a it, number of different ways. I mean, often, you know, we think about like drug overdose and things like that. Right. And we know people aren't dying that way with marijuana, right. you know, but in, I, I mean, just off the top of my head, there was that young teenage boy that was running from the cops that was mm -hmm. shot while trying to flush mm -hmm. it down the toilet. Right. There was Richard Floor who died to medical complications while in prison. Right, and there's, that happens over and over. Right. I mean, there's people that have committed suicide while in prison because or they thought they've lost their lives. future. Yeah, you know? their whole future. And, and, and to be fair, that, act, they that actually have could, in many yeah, ways. Yeah, exactly. It, it definitely makes their future harder. Uh, you know, and, and going back to what you said a little bit earlier about d overdose, you know, um, there's this whole idea of, you know, drug courts, drug courts, but drug courts don't work, and not, there's not always going to be a bed for somebody who wants to go that route. And, and you know, and a lot of people, um, just because you want treatment doesn't mean that your addiction stops. Yeah. You, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to get help. Okay, so I'm not going to use, you know, whatever my substance is. You know, so people do dr die in need of, um, you know, health care. And, and the irony to me of, of drug rehabilitation itself is that it's it's readily available to those that don't want it. And yeah. almost impossible to find for those that do. And and I've I've encountered this time and time again with friends and family, you know, looking for help that, that if you want it, Mm -hmm. There, there's obstacles that prevent you, but but if you don't want it, if you think you're fine or not an mm -hmm. addict, or you know medical marijuana patients being forced into drug treatment, you know right. things like this. Oh, there's plenty of room for all of these people, but right. then people that I know that have serious addiction problems and really would benefit have mm -hmm. trouble finding a bed. There, there's just there's no availability. Well, and so, and so those people going back to what we were talking about earlier with the quilt, those people die waiting for treatment, and that's a consequence of the drug war. Absolutely, you know, and and I think that's what we you you and I were talking about is like we. Want to create a memorial quilt, mm -hmm. if we will, and and you know this has, you know, um, a visual impact. It's also a way for people to mourn. It's also a, pe a way for people to express how they felt about this person and maybe vent a little frustration. But right. we'd like to invite people to send in um, a quilt patch. A quilt patch. And you and I had talked about what size. And, and I <clears> think <throat> I think what we had decided is that we wanted to kind of leave that open. So, But we want uniform sizes. So like 3, 4, 6, and 12-inch patches. And right. that way we can piece them together in yeah. some way. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think that, you know... It, you and I had talked, and, and one great idea is to use something that belonged to them, like an old yeah, T-shirt, like or, an old T-shirt, or pair of jeans, or a school patch, or you know anything you, you wanted know, to put on this on this corporate, quilt patch. Incorporate something to that, personalize. That, yeah, it. to personalize it. And there's, you know, I'm I'm no seamstress. Not by if it's not a straight line, I'm not going to do it. But all we need is a square. And, all we need and is a square. You, you talked about paint. fabric pens. There's all that kinds you can of buy. fabric pens and paints and stuff like that. I mean, if you can so embroider like Joanne so, Fabrics or Michaels you know, or something like that. And yeah, just any for craft a couple store. Bucks. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff out there. Um, you know, so we want to invite people to send it in, and we'll post. Um, we're getting the page ready um, uh, to to present that to the world. And, and um, if anybody has suggestions, certainly you know send us something on Facebook. Or, and and like I said, the patch is to memorialize them. But you know, for those things that that don't easily fit on a patch or just to further explain mm -hmm. you know sending in like a short email or letter about a little bit about their life we can share that on that web page as well have you ever seen the aids quilt i have, have i have, you, have yeah. and it's it's overwhelming when you see it um and you know and you start at the center and you go you know you st the way that quilt works is you, i believe it's the center is the oldest patch mm -hmm. and it goes um, out old, from there yeah you know as the earliest death that's recorded according to aids and then it goes out from there and, and, you know, I, I think that was brilliant the way they did that because that showed how big this, how, the, how big this issue became 
almost instant. And the rate at which it's growing. I right. mean, you can see the progress over time. And that's kind of, I, I think we really, you know, are hoping that this quilt, I mean, if enough people get on board and send in their patches, this quilt is going to be huge. It's mm-hmm. going, it's, there's thousands and thousands of people affected. And, and it's not just things you can look up with statistics. I mean, right. like we pointed out, some of these things aren't so directly related. Somebody who dies in jail due to medical complications Patients may not, not be, be documented in statistics. Right, exactly, and, exactly. And there's so many different circumstances that we're not thinking about, that, it, that there's stories to be told that, that need awareness. That we haven't even thought about. I mean, you and I, right. we thought about, like you know, like you said, the few examples that we've mentioned, dying in jail, dying as an overdose, dying, you know, for different right. situations. But I think, you know, I, I think there are so many other ways that people uh, Here's have... another one that comes up, you know, just again, off the top of my head, that, that young lady that that was arrested for marijuana and was used as a drug informant. Oh yeah, that and one was killed as a result. Mm-hmm. I'm, Rachel Hoffman. Rachel Thank Hoffman, you. Yeah. And, and there's there's so many different ways that this occurs. Uh, so many different ways. Um, right. And, and we want people to be raising awareness about what these real impacts are because our politicians. Well, I'd and like their names speakers, not to be forgotten. I'd like that there. I'd like you know there to be some significance, something you know. I. I, I but, but but what I was going to say is that we want these people that are always saying, you know, that, that there is no consequence to the average person other than, mm-hmm. you know, these minimal, oh, a fine or this, that or right. the other, to actually see what they're in denial about. <laughs> hey, and that's this just quote, it. That's this, my thing. Know... It's like, it's a simple way to challenge their denial. It's a very simple way to challenge it. And, and I... I, I have grown tired of hearing about all the people that they don't lock up because right. of marijuana. And... And and <laughs> I'm sorry, I can think of several people off the top of my head. Immediately when I hear that, my gut reaction is to think of all these people that I do know that have died. And, right. and it's really easy. And I know that's because I'm very immersed into this movement. But but before I was in this movement, I knew plenty of people that had lost their lives well, to you the drug. I, well, no, no. Before I was in this movement, before I ever used marijuana, when I was mm-hmm. in high school, I knew mm-hmm. people that had lost their lives. Yeah, me too. I, I mean, it's... One one guy that I went to school with in high school was shot because he was accused of lacing a joint with aerosol. So the guy that he sold it to went home, got a gun, and shot him. I, I mean, th- this wow. happened when I was in. I I don't know that you can lace a joint with aerosol. I don't even know how that works, but I know that that's and and, and I mean that was traumatic. That mm-hmm. was <laughs> it, it was. Um, outside lives. of you know the movement seeing in and mm-hmm. and knowing how people are being impacted and i grew up you know near a, a couple of very rough neighborhoods where mm-hmm. you see a lot more i know you know driving up to to somebody's property once and and having somebody in my car buying pounds from 10 year old kids you wow. can imagine that their lives are impacted by well, this you know, you know what speaking i speaking mean? of kids i mean kids are an unintended consequence in this especially mm-hmm. when we're talking about you know turf wars over drugs and and look at what's going on in mexico i mean I don't think we have space enough, but I think that that should be included. Well, I don't and that's think what I'm saying just is, is that United there's so States. many people. I don't think this quilt should just be from people from the United States. I, you know, I would encourage anybody from anywhere in the, in the world that has to, to include this because this is a global problem. Right. And I, so, so ideally where we're at now is we're calling for patches and right. stories. Um, we're definitely looking for experienced quilters, too, that can make this look much more beautiful than you and I. You and I both are mildly familiar but neither one of us is quilters so Straight we're looking lines. for quilters <laughs> and and then um you know all the different stories that are out there and maybe like partnerships with other you know groups mm-hmm. advocacy groups and things like that that can kind of help with the outreach you know right. that would probably be a good thing too so right and i you know and we encourage people to submit ideas um you know if you you know want to write a letter we'll read some of these on the air not all of them obviously um i, I hopefully we'll get but this goes back to um, one more thing I wanted to kind of address here is this this new format that we have and how wonderful this could be for this sort of a project because it's going to allow people to network together on mm-hmm. our discussion board right. or to um, send in contact forms to us right. if they have ideas or, or thoughts, guest ideas or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it'll also allow us to respond to people like, you know, during the week if we're seeing these discussions going on. So we, you can go check out our blogs there on our shows. And, and we'll, you have a forum dedicated to it. Have you set that up, the forum, um, the quilt project? I have not set it up yet. Okay. We, we need to get that set up. I w- wanted to continue to iron out with you exactly mm-hmm. what we were looking for. But, yeah, we're going to set it up on there. We need to put out an address on where to mail the patches to. Uh, I, I'm hoping yes. to hijack Russ's address. So. Yeah, so that address <laughs> to send your patch to. 4110. <laughs> Southeast Hawthorne Boulevard, number 161, Portland, Oregon, 
888-900-9714. And we'll make sure that that's up on the, yeah, the blog it. post. And when, once we get this going, I think, like I said, it's going to be huge. And, and it can be an evolving if people have ideas or suggestions on mm -hmm. how maybe to do this a little bit differently. And you and I had talked, too, that, that it's possible that if we get a lot of patches that maybe don't specifically fit our theme, that we could, you know, always look at making other quilts as well. Yeah. To, to oh, yeah. different aspects because right. the drug war touches different people in exactly. different ways. Exactly. It, it totally does. And I, and I think <coughs> that those are things that this, you know, this could branch on to many different areas. Right. Uh, but I think we want to stay focused on those, you know. Just people who have lost their, their lives, lives as a result of the drug war. received a death sentence because of the drug war. And I don't necessarily care if it's marijuana related. To no, no. I'm, I'm talking the drug war at large because, mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, people are losing their lives in a whole number of different ways. And it's always counterproductive. It's mm -hmm. It's not... The, the lost lives are not having the effect that our policymakers would like to think they're having. <laughs> right. So I, I, I definitely want to work on this. So that'll be up on our blog. Um, our website is now 420radio.org, or you can go get us directly at a different view.us. Correct. And that'll go straight to our pages. Um, but all the shows are available at the 420radio.org. That's right. Which includes Russ's show and a number of other ones as well. So, and, uh, in I, other news, your uh, iTunes feed, podcast feed, and on Stitcher Radio are all taken care of. So a different view is available for your favorite podcasting platform, your iPod, your iTunes, uh, Stitcher Radio on Android or I, iPhone. I'll have to get that all those links from you, too, so that we can do a short little blog to help mm -hmm. promote those sections. They're right up there. There's a button now a on the A Different View page. Excellent. Cool. All right. Straight to it. There you go. So we should probably take a quick break, yes, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about how our drug war is affecting people with a story out of the Salem News. Oh, yes. Well, thanks for listening. You're listening to Different View. The Law Offices of Omar Figueroa would like to remind you to stand up for your rights. Please do not give up your precious liberties. There's nothing wrong with standing up for our constitutional rights, and in fact, it's the only way to honor the Constitution that recognizes our natural rights. Treat law enforcement with respect and respect the Constitution by standing up for your rights. If you are detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, I respectfully invoke all my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search and seizure. I want to remain silent, and I want to speak to my attorney, Omar Figueroa. Omar Figueroa has more than a decade of experience in federal and California courts and graduated from Yale University, Stanford Law School, and Trial Lawyers College. Please contact the law offices of Omar Figueroa at 415-489-0420 or 707-829-0215 or on the web at www.omarfigueroa.com What's happening, cool cats? This is Big Daddy, and I want you to cruise on over to the Funky Roller Rink. We'll be grooving all night long. Doors open at 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific, every Thursday night. Right here on RadicalRust.com. Funky. Delicious. Marijuana, the dried leaves and flowers of the Indian hemp weed, is used in the form of a cigarette. Marijuana smoking, experts point out, can make a helpless addict of its victim within weeks, causing physical and moral ruin and death. Should you ever be confronted with the temptation of taking that first puff of a marijuana cigarette, don't do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. The chief is the original white The chief
back with A Different View. Well, thanks for tuning in. You're listening to A Different View with Jennifer and, or Jennifer Alexander, not Ed. Let's see, it's not Ed. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Iva Cunningham. Um, uh, wow, lots of uh, big news. Um, I, I don't know if you've been watching the um, all the celebrities that have been coming out. About, I don't really watch TV here. You know, I don't really radio. care. I'm culturally but, challenged. <laughs> see, see, I was culturally starved when I was a child, so I'm trying to make up for it now. Um, but I find it really interesting. You know, Justin Bieber just was caught in, with some compromising photos of him smoking pot. And then uh, Lady Gaga has been out for a while. I mean, she smokes on stage and all that good stuff. And then Gal- or, uh, Zach Galifianakis, you know, lit up on... Whose show was that? Bill Maher, I Bill think. Bill Maher, yeah. Just lit up on Bill Maher. And, you know, and I think, I, I, I think you know... It's not like they've ever been hiding their marijuana no, uh-uh. use, though. I mean, come on. How many... <laughs> but what I find interesting, though, I find what I find interesting is that, you know, smoking pot, you know, when you had a... It's kind of like the sex tape. Now, hear me out. <laughs> I know everyone's like, what? <laughs> Remember when Rob Lowe did his sex tape? It ruined his career. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> and now a sex tape is kind of like what catapult you to reality star. I'm mean, like Paris Hilton. Uh, a few other wow. people have done that. I know. I have not watched no, TV in a long I time, I apparently. But the <laughs> attitude towards that has changed a great deal, right? And, and and it wasn't that long ago that if you were caught smoking pot, oh my God, you had trouble and that sort of thing. You know, Hollywood would shun you. You had drug issues. You had drug issues. Now it's like, yeah, if you're if you're a celebrity, of course you smoke pot. You know what I mean? That attitude has changed. It's, it's, See, I don't think it's changed. I think it's always been that way. I mean, every every well, Hollywood star well, you can think of. Of course, it's always been there. It's always been there. I, I mean, you know, it's just that it coming out of the closet, if you will, and being so uh, uh, blatant. A lot about of people it. are being a lot more open about it, which is great. I, I wish. Well, and I, you know, and it's kind of like you know, here's here's Justin Bieber, and he's been caught with some compromises. I. I haven't heard anything. Nobody's talking about it. Nothing. But, you know, when um, Michael Phelps came, you know, was caught or Miley Cyrus, it was all over the place. Now it's like, oh, yeah, that's yesterday's news. You know, even, you know, even uh, Lady Gaga, she's a big, she's huge. And, oh, she spoke about big deal. Oh, she don't. Was, oh, okay. Next. And they just simply don't care. And, and it's kind of that attitude of it, it being expected. And it, it gives me kind of hope that things are, you know, kind of going in that direction that, like, because they do, because Hollywood does tend to lead the way in some ways, you know, of cult, changing, cult, shaping cultural attitudes, but you know, good or bad, that is absolutely true. Excuse me. Um, but <coughs> I, I find it really interesting that there's no news about it. It's not big news. And Justin Bieber being a young kid and being caught with marijuana, I would think that that would hit somebody's radar. Yeah, not mine. Not yours. <laughs> you just don't care, do you, Jennifer? I, I'm definitely, it's not that I'm culturally challenged. I, I choose to be culturally ignorant. <laughs> well, I do too, but I just, I just thought, I just thought that was really interesting that it's, that it, it, you know, when, when Michael Phelps was caught with all those pictures or Miley Cyrus was caught with those pictures and there's been a couple others that I can't remember, but, um, it was like, oh my God, their careers are over. How's this going to impact? I was this big, big deal about it. See, and- I feel like maybe that's true. It, it depends upon what they're trying to do. But when it comes to celebrity, I mean, you may lose particular contracts that want you to be that. Cl- sure. Disney, for instance, yeah. is probably not going to keep Miley Cyrus if or she's just using video. drugs. You know. Right. Sure. On the other hand, there's a lot of very profitable job offers <laughs> that, that would follow right behind that. Right. Well, so I, I don't think that the their response. career ever ended. You know, and. Anybody, as far as in Hollywood goes, I think that it just changes how. Well, I mean, well, viewed. that's not entirely true with Michael Phelps. He lost a lot of endorsement, big time yeah, endorsement. He's not Hollywood. <laughs> no, but he no, but he is a celebrity. He is a celebrity nonetheless. You you cannot you cannot. I mean, that's that, the difference though, because you're talking about his career versus his celebrity, <laughs> and a lot of people remain. Well, his career is him what, being what was a, that a fitness celebrity. That is really what he is. I mean, he's he yeah he got there because he has athletic. Uh, he's an F- I'm sure Michael Phelps would love to know that all that training was just so that he could be known. Well, I'm, not, no, that's not, not what I'm applying. That's not what I'm applying at all. <laughs> anyway, we could debate whether he is or isn't a celebrity or whatever. But I, I, I think my, my, my point is, is that um, Holly, the response from the public isn't you know, people calling to, you know, uh, remove their advertising or remove their support from right. that. The that public endorsement. is definitely much more forgiving of that Right. It, and it's becoming even more so. Right. And there's less like, oh, so what? It didn't hurt their career. It didn't hurt their career. It's no big deal. Nobody cares. You know, and, and I think 
that is refreshing and it's encouraging because it good or bad celebrities do have a huge impact on pop culture and culture at large and good or bad you know there are people who idolize um lady gaga there are people for whatever reason idolize bieber um i don't get it but they do you know and i think and, they're younger than you <laughs> i'm young i'm young i'm not very old <laughs> Anyway, anyway, but I just, I just think it's a very interesting. I, I, I think that, that, I mean, like what you're talking about in general is, is definitely something we're seeing a lot of is, is that there's more of a mainstream, just common conversation acceptance as opposed to it being a specific topic. Right. Like it's, it's not, it's not that people in Hollywood weren't using drugs before. I mean, oh, of course they were. There, there's so there's many some that good you can't stuff even that was written <laughs> <laughs> as a direct result. Yeah. Um, and, and that Days goes back. And I was gonna say that goes back, you know, even further than just our more recent pop culture. I mean, mm -hmm. like most of the um, famous authors were were very prolific drug users of whatever drug was popular at like, the time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so um, it's it, yeah, it's not. Um, it's not a new thing, but I think that the way that the public is accepting them as, as just normal, like who cares? No different right. than the average person. Right. Um, I think that has changed. Well, and I think, you know, if, if they're, if they're becoming more encouraging of, you know, pop culture artists using it, um, or being caught with it, I, I do see them being more tolerant. Um, or desensitized to it when they see it like kids and like, oh, that's what they do these days. You know what I mean? I, I see I see that being kind of the attitude towards the general public as well. Like, oh, so what? Yeah. I just don't like that choice of words. <laughs> what choice of words? The, the desensitized and being caught with it and everything. It implies that anybody has any business in what you're doing. You know what I mean? I think that the reality is is that the, the changing tide is people being more willing to let you be who you are mm -hmm. without... You know what I mean? Like, right, live and let live. Yeah, I, I don't think, I, I don't think that the the attitudes. Do you that think are that they caught more, on to the idea that that? <laughs> well, no, I was going to say I don't think the attitude that that's been more uh, allowing of of a legal marijuana status mm -hmm. necessarily favors using marijuana. Well, they yeah. favor staying out of your business. <laughs> you know right, what I mean? Right. And, that, and that's a different argument. Well, so that. Just the wording, I, To a though. point, I disagree. To a point, I disagree, because I do think that we have done a pretty good job of educating more and more people. I think there are uh, people... Right, who, right, but the, the, it's not that everybody should be smoking pot. No, no, I mean, no. that's, not, and that's I don't, not the not argument. Not everybody will smoke pot, even if it did become legal. Right, right. It, the argument is that why should it matter to you if I smoke pot? Well, yeah. And, and that's, that's a different kind of perspective. So. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Um, anyway... I forgot where you were going with that. I was going to talk <laughs> about a CPS show, but we can do oh, that, yes. or a CPS case, but we can do that in our next segment, because I think we should take a, probably a quick break yes. here, and then come back and we'll talk about that. That's a Salem News story um, involving a legal medical marijuana patient. It's, it's interesting. We'll talk about it when we come back. You're listening to A Different View. <laughs> the man dude it has been way too long and you should come over let's hang out chill at my place hey long time no see right hey come in come in come in now you brought the uh the uh marijuana right just checking can i can i take a look at that? oh wow this is, this is good this is that um you got that from that from that from that one that one? yeah i remember this shit Cheers. Some good shit, man. This is where'd you get this? Yeah, it's weird. Like I always rather would smoke it out of a bowl than a bong. Uh, I think it's my grandma. A baby? Wow, yeah. Seven? 
I, that's awful. I don't... Hey, let me show you this YouTube video. It's so funny. It's like, are you hungry? I'm a little hungry. I could, I could have a little snack. This food's only like four days old. I'm so good at this when I'm stoned. Yeah, hi. Uh, do you guys deliver? And how long will that be? Ready for round two? Who do you feel like watching? What are you in the mood for? You don't like Nurse Jackie? I'm so high. You hear that? <laughs> There's no more weed? I'm tired. Are you tired? I'm getting tired. Falling asleep. Let's do this again, you know, we'll we'll get we'll hang out, we'll Yeah. Take care. This is Jennifer and Iva, different view. So, um, no, I'm Iva, you're Jennifer. Jennifer. <laughs> anyway, um, Salem News is, is a, a local, uh, I guess you call them a mom and pop news production here in, in Oregon. Uh, a couple great people, Tim and Bonnie King, and, mm -hmm. and a bunch of other people working with them, you know, as, as news uh, journalists. It, one of the articles that I was reading just the other day, it's from January 8th, and it's written by Tony Samani, which is probably one of these people that they have. I, I know they've allowed me to write there before and, and um, a few other people in, in our movement. So I'm sure this is one of their correspondence. It sounds like she's from California, if I'm mm -hmm. understanding correctly. Mm -hmm. and, and this story is about, her name is Larissa Nearing, mm -hmm. and she... Um, she took her kid to you know daycare and went and did her day or whatever and and went to work. She gets a phone call that her apartment building is on fire and she rushes to her home and she's trying to get in because apparently she has a lot of very expensive equipment mm -hmm. in in the um in the apartment that this she didn't want to lose. Uh, no, no, um, she's actually a DJ. Oh, <laughs> so it was it was very expensive DJ equipment that that she wanted well, yeah, to her remove from probably, yeah. where it could get damaged. And and they were trying to stop her from going in, reasonably so. It's a burning building. Mm -hmm. um, but but needless to say, uh, at some point during this, you know, kind of back and forth between her and the officers, they arrested her for interfering with an officer. Mm -hmm. And it was probably just to get her out of the way. Uh, you know, you can imagine there's a fire. You don't want people running into the building. If you have to physically restrain them, it, this all is understandable to me at this point. Mm -hmm. But then they pulled marijuana from her trunk and... Uh, basically, you know, asked her, this is all according to the story that I'm reading here, and this is the only source, so I'm just going by what's here, you know. But the, the, he pulls marijuana from the trunk, says um, that uh, he's that she's going to arrest her or whatever. Um, he says, is this yours? If it is, you are mm -hmm. going away for a long time. <laughs> and so she explains that she's a legal patient in California. Mm -hmm. I presume that this all took place in California, from what I can tell, mm -hmm. San Diego. <laughs> you know, so she should be legal there. Um they they attempted to put a few charges through on her mm -hmm. and because and they were the all cannabis? dropped. Yeah. Okay. Um it let's see. It was um child endangerment. It was Was she over her limit at all? Do you know how much they did? was it there does a not mark? say how much was in her car, but uh -huh. it was in the trunk of her car. So it wasn't like out in the driving view. compartment. It's, yeah, it's okay. out of public view. Uh it does it say that she not was like within she could the reach legal behind. limits. Yeah, okay. California law isn't a set standard like here we have this one and a half pounds max so, you know mm -hmm. uh, california is a little bit more flexible than that but i think that their their limit is usually less than ours and what you're supposed to be possessing at one mm -hmm. time right so it just says within the legal limits of the california law um but all that being said you know all of these charges ended up being dropped but in the course of this they took her child to foster care mm. And once CPS is involved, and what did they, did they say? What grounds they took the child to? Well, when she was arrested, if you're mm -hmm. arrested and you have a child, your children have to go into protective oh, okay. custody. Bam! But didn't they're, they drop the charges when they came back and got her? Right? They arrested her at the scene, though. Right. Her son was at, or her child. I don't know if it was a son or a daughter. Was at daycare. Mm -hmm. So at the moment that they incarcerate the parent, the state has to take custody of oh, the okay. child. I see what you're saying. Even if they release her an hour later, mm -hmm. they they you know what I'm saying. Right. I mean, like if they know, obviously, then they shouldn't 
fine. But but needless to say, it happens often that if a parent is arrested, if it's a two parent home, then they'll usually mm-hmm. leave it with one of the parents because you've only arrested one. Right. But if it's just the one parent, or if both parents are arrested the state is required by law to take Intervene. custody yeah. of mm-hmm. that child. And now they have the option of placing the child with like a family member or a close friend in certain circumstances and mm-hmm. usually only with a court order. So there's still a few days before that would happen um, sometimes. Or they take them and place them into foster care and, and go that route. Either way, then the person has to fight with the state to get their child back because the state has this interest in they, if they were to give the child back without doing their investigation, mm-hmm. then of course they would be considered ne- negligent in doing their duty in protecting that child. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So there's kind of this extreme process. Needless to say, she um, she had to wait. It was like almost a year. A year before, <laughs> even the charges were dropped. She lost her job because of everything that you know happened. It being reported and everything, she lost her job, her home. <laughs> they took her kid into child custody. She she felt shamed publicly, sure. you know, because well, you yeah. lose your kid. The state takes them. Everybody assumes there's something. You're hurting that. You know what I mean? Right, like right. those questions that are well, then. Well, yeah. You're never your your character is definitely judged to that point. And, and since employers can fire you for whatever reason they want to, they they will. Apparently, at some point, the, they tried to get the DMV to revoke her license what? as a drug addict in this whole process. And that's why not would, real I, clear. What I don't understand is why they would go so... Does she have a record? I mean, it seems like they just... they And, and were, the question that you're asking, and this is the part that's kind of frustrating, I would think. The question that you're asking sounds perfectly logical. There must be more to the story. And, right. And a I mean, rational just, person would say, yes, I hope to God there's more to the story, because if they would just, you know, rake you over go the coals like this. Go to this point. I mean, go to these kind of efforts. But you have to, to understand how bureaucratic the process is. Mm-hmm. In most cases, they don't have a choice but to rake you over the coals for liability reasons. So while they're dragging you and your child through the mud, they're basically covering their ass. It's not about you or your child. It's about them not being responsible should they make a wrong decision. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So they have to jump through all these hoops in order for the natural thing of you to have your child to be the status quo. Right. I don't think that it's as, because even in here, it was like a lot of people in her in her story here say, you know, what did you do to piss this guy off? You know, why mm-hmm. are they going to such lengths? And that's one side of it. But on the other side, it really I, is bureaucratic. It really I mean, it is does a seem process. Like, it does seem like they, they you know, because they didn't have to go after her license. They didn't have to. Well, that depends. Now, if the law has a certain thing that if you were arrested in a traffic stop that Mm -hmm. that you should lose your license, then they arrested her, pulled it from the trunk of her car. Do you see what I'm saying? Depending upon how it's classed depends upon how it proceeds. And and who knows? I don't know all the details. I mean, this is more of a... Well, and this just proves the entanglement of the drug law. I, I mean... That if if what you're saying is like like a domino effect, and exactly. they had to pursue that, then what you're saying is that that, that the the drug war has weaved itself into these other you know Absolutely. situations and and has this sort of cause and effect. I, I mean, it's interesting because it seems to me that they went to to the absolute links of the law that they could to prosecute or at least screw with this woman to. But then to again, least make something. In one stay. of our early shows, we had Jane Doe on here, right? Who had an apartment fire where two of her children were tragically. Exactly. Killed. Yeah. And and she's had to do the same thing. And now, oh, on, on the one about. hand, somebody could say maybe that there's a problem, that, mm-hmm. that they're rightfully interfering. On the other hand, this woman's already lost two of her children. How can you take her third child, child from yeah. her and say, you know what I mean? Right, like, right, right. I, there, there's two sides to every well, story, there's that, but there's is always... it helping these children? Well, and I think that there's, there's that stigma with marijuana that, oh, you're unmotivated, you're sleepy, you can't do anything. And, you know, yeah, maybe some of that's true. But that, but I, I wouldn't say that that impairs your ability to be a parent. And that's always the snap decision. That's that's the stigma that comes with marijuana. It's like, oh, well, clearly you couldn't be a good parent if you're stoned out of your mind. You'll be sleeping. And they have that image. And they, you know, are you know, p- people who aren't aware of what, you know, never consume medicine or cannabis don't really know that that's not what happens. Right. You know, um, I... I, I that stigma that comes with it, I, I think will stick around for a long time, especially when we're talking about mothers and children. Well, and, and these are the stories that disturb me the most. I mean, as as a parent, you know, sure. you you just kind of recognize how 
it, it, in the best of intent with the best of intentions mm -hmm. you know the the state quote unquote the state ha has this interest in protecting all children and and most people want this to be so i mean we don't want to see children hurt by their parents or any other person who they're in the care of you know mm -hmm. so we have these very strict laws for this but these kind of wavy definitions between like, you know, uh, with marijuana, is it medicine on the one hand or is it an illegal drug on the other hand, mm -hmm. that that impacts whether or not, you know, you have the right, the right interests in your child yourself as mm -hmm. a parent. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, and, you know, and I'm sure that there's, a, there's, there's the also... You know, and I'd want them to to investigate if they felt like there was other priorities that were taking place above the child's needs and concerns and welfare. Yeah, I I'd like that, but I I don't know. I I it, it just seems like they went after like every breath this woman made to try to stick something to her. I mean, well, but th that's just the thing is that it, just like with plea deals in the criminal justice system, if you're compliant, if you're like, yes, yes, I have a marijuana problem, I'll go to your program, mm -hmm. I'll do this, and I'll get my kid back. Sometimes it can be easier if you're if you're resistant. There's additional obstacles that come about as a result. I mean, I, one instance is is that they they claim you know that if you're a medical marijuana patient in many of these cases you you fit the definition of a drug addict, so you're required to do drug rehabilitation, just like with the criminal justice system. But if it's your medicine, of course you're going to keep using it. It's right, your right, yeah, yeah. Oh, the law you're not me. I'm not sick because anymore. you've used it every day. It's, right, it's right. What you're using to treat an ailment. Mm -hmm. That's a different perspective than than the drug addiction <clears throat> system is set up to deal with. And if you're still using, that means you're failing to keep clean. And there's these more stringent. Do you see what I'm saying? Right, right. It, yeah. The, oh, yeah. The paradigm is built contrary to what agrees with medical it's mm -hmm. just it's not suitable and well, and it creates these complications and and I personally know so many people that have been forced into rehab for marijuana whether a patient or non-patient mm -hmm. that absolutely denied they had any problem and had stopped smoking repeatedly at various intervals when necessary you know what mm -hmm. I mean but because of the bureaucracy <laughs> they were required to take this and then like I said earlier I know some people that really really need and want the treatment and mm -hmm. there's no beds available right so <clears throat> there's there's a whole problem a breakdown in our system I mean this story kind of goes for me personally to even if you think marijuana is a problem, mm -hmm. is the way that we've impacted this person's life. I mean, what, what is, yeah, is, is that is it equitable? <laughs> right. It doesn't make sense to go to these links. And and what and, did that and to do what? to the child? And to, and to what? So taxpayers are out of money. Child is is now has uh, PTSD probably from this situation. So is the mother probably. You know, a um, lot of money wasted, a lot of effort. Somebody's life was turned upside down, and for marijuana and for all the charges being dropped <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly all charges dropped. don't forget that that's usually the key in most of these cases as well so so, so then they can say see we didn't charge you yeah but we ruined your life <laughs> there you go that'll teach you we need to take a quick break you're listening to a different view uh we'll be right back Hi, this is Dan Michaels. If you're looking for professional voice talent for your commercial or podcast, I'm your man. Visit danmichaelsaudio.com for more information.
locked up behind my back Cause a man say it's an illegal act It took me from my smooth passage To get around this courtroom baggage Not without a warrant And now we're Not back without with a, a different view <laughs> Oh, the bre- we should have like a blooper show of what goes on between the breaks. I think I go agree. that's when the cameras are off. <laughs> There's a reason. Yeah, but if the speakers were or if the, the recording were going, that's not good. Well, you know, one of the things I would talk about in the beginning is I wanted to talk about some of the good unintended consequences uh, that people aren't thinking about and rarely think about. I mean... I don't want to say rarely. I mean, there's not a lot of people who are leading the charge to legalize hemp as well. And and hemp is illegal because marijuana is illegal. But in Colorado and now Washington, um, the hemp industry is poised to grow. And why shouldn't it? I mean, here's a product that we can grow that can make that can seriously turn around, you know, our economy, our, our environment. Um, you know, food, fiber, fuel. I mean, I can't go on and on on about it, but um, or I can go on and on about it. But I, I think this is, you know, I'm I am really happy that that now we have two states that are contemplating not just you know what we smoke pot, you know, enjoy pot, and and but now are looking at hemp as like finally we can start to build this industry. And put some farmers back to work, put some people back to work, and you know generate a, you know thousands of products just from the ability to grow that. And, and I'm I'm encouraged by that. And, and there hasn't been a whole lot of news about it, but on the Denver Post, DenverPost.com, you can um, there's an article that talks about it. And and you know the whole the whole reason why hemp was originally legal is because they are, are apparently our police department our, our um, law officials could not tell the difference between marijuana and hemp. But also because of cross um, fertilization, pollination. pollination. Thank you. You're the plant girl. I, I think um, <laughs> so. In my research, and I actually wrote an article on this a while back, but it, it's my opinion that that hemp was technically never outlawed, ever. Like federally speaking, it's it's legal to grow hemp. There's no law against growing hemp. The the law d- is that they requ- they require a permit, the DEA. Right. right. Um, but the it's never it's gonna... never been illegal to grow hemp. Um, ironically, because if you ask people, they, they all think it is. And that's because the DEA then says, well, we can't tell the difference. Right. But, <laughs> and, but and, not, you know, having, even though they say they, you have to apply for a permit, but then never giving it out. And then, Except for and then, in World War II, we know there was the, the big push for mm-hmm. everybody to grow, you know, hemp at that time. But when they outlawed it, people presumed that hemp would remain legal because the way that it was written, you know, and then over the years, it's just kind of forgotten Mm -hmm. about they, they introduced synthetics and, but you know, what I think is encouraging though, and I, and I think this must be said, and it mentions it in the article that hemp, because it has, it's because it has such a capacity to do so many different things. Yes. We're talking about many, many industries from one product and it, it, Wherever you stand on on smoking cannabis, I don't really care. Or using cannabis or whatever for fun, recreation, medicine, I don't care. But you cannot deny that hemp could turn this turn the world economy around. Not in our environment. I, I mean, there's so many industries that will you know possibly be threatened because now hemp is a safer, smarter product. Um, but Oh my God! I mean, the industry that could be just from all the different, you know, revenue sources. Right. You know. Well, there's a number of of hemp plastics that I've I've seen hemp a little Crete, bit about. Hemp plastics. Well, no, I was going to say, nylon. but but just look around the room, oh, and and, and this I'm sure applies to any one of our listeners. I I can see in your house, and I know you're surrounded by plastic, because <laughs> because I mean it's everywhere. Where? Creepy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, no, really. I mean, I look at my car. My car's made out of plastic. plastic. I, everything is made out of plastic. Half my dishes are plastic. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, your your toothbrush is plastic. Go to what room. isn't plastic in your home? You right, know? exactly. The fact that we can do this out of hemp grown in the ground instead of petroleum products mm-hmm. is is that that's huge to me. You know, hempcrete being another one because of all the the, the construction materials and the way that we it's build. wasted and yeah, oh yeah, uh, you know, uh, in, in you know, and then just talk about food. 
you know, just another source of highly nutritious um, uh, food being available on the market. You know, it, it is now because you see the hemp granola and you see the hemp bars. Imported and, from somewhere else. Exactly. Brought <laughs> in expensive, too. Expensive. So this would also allow those industries to flourish because, they're, you know, their bottom line is going to be impacted so much by shipping this, you know, this product from from. Uh, another country into this one, right? Um, and and I think there's just a few countries that allow industrial Our hemp growth. Our law right? for importing hemp is very very specific, and it has to be below I think it's 0.03 percent THC. And while many countries in the world do produce hemp many of them don't comply with our strict standards on what we'll allow across the border. So there's uh, there's only certain countries that we can Are they afraid from. you'll smoke the t-shirt? I, you know, really, they are. That It's, it's hilarious. Reminds <laughs> me of the story, they, they they of the story that you were telling me narcotic. about uh, at one of the, uh, the events here where um, um, the kids were rubbing... <laughs> We're rubbing Actually, on the hemp this lotion shirt. thinking that we're going to get high. Like, nope, that's not how it works. The, the hemp products, yeah, a lot of people are confused, and they think that hemp products contain active THC, and that mm -hmm. by taking a shower and using hemp soap, that you'll get out of the shower stoned out of your mind, and it doesn't work that way. No. It's uh -uh. hemp. Uh, it, it does not work that way. <laughs> well, I wonder if, if you if you went to that extreme, if, if you were like our good friend from Oregon Hemp Works, and... You would not get high. No, 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 I'm not talking about that. I, I, I'm, I'm wondering if... If like if you you know just like in the same way that you, if you ate a lot of poppies you would test positive you get a false positive oh yeah so I wonder if hemp if you yeah I mean because shampoo if it lotion, was high enough soaps, in THC content then food. yes eating it you could theoretically <laughs> again my drug test. tests are bullshit and you need to have impairment tests that's all I'm gonna say about that I won't go there <laughs> but no I mean hemp hemp is is it's huge and it's it's not just it's a cleaner oil it's a it's a, just a cleaner product and you know it's it, it's common I love and negative how people that are against uh legalizing hemp they, they they basically say it's the Trojan horse for legal marijuana, you know, like just like they did with medical marijuana, you know. Now this actually, you know, mostly happened before. Well, medical, medical marijuana is a Trojan horse for legalization. <laughs> no, but they were saying uh. the same things about hemp mm -hmm. prior to that, as you know, hemp activists that 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 people just want their hemp T-shirts because mm -hmm, you know, yeah. it, either way, just that it would be an excuse to hide it. There's all these different reasons that they say that we can't have legal hemp and why right. advocates promote it. I was reading that thing from last year. Here, here in Oregon, our sheriffs said that hemp was um, meant to make the young kids think it was this cool, savvy kick thing. I forget what terminology they use, but basically that it was to lure young kids in to the drug culture. And it's it, it's amazing to me, you know, that 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 perspective discounts the thousands of uses that hemp mm -hmm. has. <laughs> Well, we I, I we we should talk about that sometime about you know pandering any drugs to kids and how there's you know the the regulated prescribed drugs that are pandered to children um, that I see on advertising and the way they manufacture and to the way that they think that we're pandering to. We can have that conversation another time. <laughs> but um, you know, I, I I'm I'm incur that's a rant that could keep me going the whole show. <laughs> You know, I would like to see, though, I would like to see some of the other communities bring together, like, hemp or hemp, um, not hemp -posiums, what am I talking about? Like, hemp expose, where they bring out all these, you know, biofuels, and they bring out all these different country or companies that are working on um, hemp manufacturing for food. Or all fiber. the different products. Right, you mean, like, yeah, side yeah exactly. Side. And, I, and I, I, it would be huge. I mean, if you just really focused on that, you know, and, and, and it's exciting to see what will happen now in Washington, Colorado. Once they, you know, start rolling that hemp, you know, pulling that hemp out of the fields and start rolling it in. I was going to say, you know, just uh, we've got a couple more minutes here. So just to jump to the other state there, Washington, one of the unintended consequences that I've seen pointed out recently in discussions is that, um, and, and I haven't verified this myself, but I believe that it's accurate. Actually, Russ can probably tell me if it's accurate as I say it. Um, in Washington's bill, they defined marijuana as being three percent THC or greater and in doing so it was their intent basically to legalize low THC hemp mm -hmm. without the restrictions that they were applying to right. but on the other side of that the question has now been raised is if I have a bag full of green leafy substance <laughs> does mm -hmm. the cop have to now prove that it's at least three percent before I can be charged because Awesome. If it's not at least three percent, 
You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, if you yeah, yeah. Tested, then, then there's always the possibility that it could be less than that, and right. therefore perfectly okay perfectly no i don't okay. know how well that would hold up in court but i mean if that is but an interesting challenge if if that is the way that it's termed that does present an interesting paradigm now more more than likely um the the machine that does this particular test it's fairly costly i think somebody had quoted it as like a hundred thousand dollars and that there's only I think you just turned a video on there. I didn't Ima. mean to. Mute. <laughs> anyway, um, the, I think the machine costs $100,000. It's fairly costly. And there's, I think, only one in the state of Washington. And the one in the state of Washington would be overburdened if all of the marijuana cases were required to test through this one location. Mm -hmm. Because they're also the ones that handle DNA testing and forensic testing for more serious crimes. Mm -hmm. We don't want them testing a bunch of bags of green <laughs> stuff. <laughs> you know? Um, but on the other hand, I Why think not? That, I think that if law enforcement were tasked with having to prove that all marijuana was marijuana, they'd find the 100000 and do it somewhere else. Right. <laughs> so right. I, I, I think realistically it's not really going to present too much of an obstacle. But it is an interesting cost that was not necessarily really intended in the. Well, I, I think we'll see a lot more of those unintended consequences, good and bad, coming out. Um, gosh, we didn't get to all of our subjects that we wanted to. There was no way we, we were going do. to. Uh, <laughs> we have kind much. of like this outline, and then you and I just jabber. But I think we that's do have show. a blog now, so yeah. there's always the possibility to talk about stories in between shows. That's right. Are you are you blogging on that at all? Not yet. <laughs> are you? No. I'm not as good of a writer. People are always disappointed yes, when they read something from me. Yes, we have stories to talk about. I mean, the blog can just point people to stories that we don't have a chance to cover. It doesn't necessarily have to be an editorial. <laughs> um, it can just be sharing news. <laughs> talk amongst yourselves. Um, but anyway, so we're, we're going to wrap up. Uh, come listen to us next Tuesday at yes, 8 p.m. Pacific. and. Right. Check out our webpage, a different view .us. And definitely check out 420radio.org. Dot org. Where Sorry. you can check out Russ and, and all of our other shows. You want to list those off real quick? Well, yeah. We've got a show every weekday at 3 o'clock Pacific, the Russ Bellville Show, for two hours of uh, interviews, news, talk, and opinion. Every night at 8 p.m. Pacific, we have a different show, including the new Viper Hour on Mondays, a different view on these Tuesdays, Wednesday night, Red Eyes Reggae Flashback, Thursday, Big Daddy show. Fink's Funky Roller Rink, and Friday, two hours of live music and metal and interviews with Herb Thrasher on the Herb Thrasher Flower Hour. 24-7 here at 420radio.org. There's always something on. Check it out. Well, and if you miss our shows, there's always replays, too. You're replayed tomorrow at 5. And, and you can and always have the YouTubes and, and YouTube. the um, MP3 uh, And the podcast now, yeah. The yeah. podcast, all these great things, all available at the website. Find uh, it in your way. Us. Um, and then uh, also uh, all of those other shows have their own web spaces with similar features at the 420radio.org. So those other shows, you can link to their websites and check them out, too. All right. Have a great night. We'll see you next week on A Different View. Bye. Sitting round, getting stoned My couch is out, I'm staying home It's clear to see, I'm fully relaxed Put all my worries back into a sack It's a counterattack for my booty to swing I say that my weed's a preventative thing If you can't understand why I'm fighting the band When they take all your liquor, let's see where you stand on the road It's a long, long road It's a long, long road 